All right, guys, what's up? Welcome to the video. So today we're going to be doing a full tutorial on how we made $1.1 million in 2022, just directly from launch control alone. So in this training, I'm going to show you exactly how we even upload a list to all the way to how do we send it out and when do we send these people um, text in our system and then who do we even text. After that, we take it even a step further to where I will give you our script and training for exactly how we do this process and outsource it to other people. So at any point in time, if you feel like you've gotten enough value from me, if I give you a gem, a nugget on exactly how you can implement your strategy to make it better or implement the strategy in order to start getting leads tomorrow, then I want you to comment down below leads and that'll allow me to be able to send you the training for the textures and the script for the textures. So please do that for me. Just comment down below leads and I will send you that script and that training. So without further ado, let's hop right into this. All right, so just gonna go over the texting process from a very high level. So the first thing we do, let me move my phone out of the way. So the first thing we do is we send out an initial blast that says like, hey, are you interested in selling 123 Main Street? Hey, first name, are you interested in selling property address? Basically, what that does is it allows us to confirm that they have a property to sell and that they are the right person we're speaking to. So our goal of the conversation, initial message, is to just reach out and say, hey, are you interested in selling? And if that answer is yes, then we want to keep going and engaging. And if it's not yes, it's either going to be a no or it's going to be a hostile response or it's going to be a response that fits. It doesn't really fit anywhere because it's like, something weird like who is this or make me an offer or whatever, right? So what we want to do is want to take those people in the who say yes, and we want to be able to convert those to leads. What that looks like when we take a person who replies yes, is we send them back another text and say, we just confirm the first name. And this is, we say something along the lines of like, hey, just confirming this is first name uh, and you are looking to sell 123 Main Street. And then if they respond positive to that, then we're going to send them to the CRM. Now, if it's someone who says something like, who is this? Then we're gonna say something along the lines of like, hey, sorry for the message out of the blue. I was just, I work with a group of investors who buys five to 10 properties a month. And I was just wondering if you were interested in selling 123 Main Street, that's what we'd say. And then we would repeat the same thing. Um, if they say, yes, sure, make me an offer um, to, to convert them. Okay, what's your first and last? Is it, hey, just confirming, I'm speaking with first name about property address. And then they're going to say yes. And then we send them over as a lead. Does that make sense? Another example would be they say, make me an offer. If they say, make me an offer, it's pretty simple. We say, hey, in order for me to do that, I need to find out a little bit more information about the property. Are, are you first name and looking to sell one, two, three Main Street? And then if they say yes, then we send them over as a lead. So the big things here is all we're doing is we're basically confirming, are they the owner? And do they have a property to sell? And if both of those things are true, then we're going to make it a lead in the system and have someone on our sales team, one of our lead managers, give them a call. So what, what if they say something like a hostile reply? If it's a hostile reply, then we keep it pretty simple and we just mark them as do not call. If it is, you know, a lot of people are going to say like F off and stop and this and that. So stop texting them and put them on the do not call and take them out of your list. Now, the last way, which is fourth way, again, we've gone over a positive reply. We've gone over a reply that's not completely positive. We've gone over a hostile reply. The last one is like, what happens if they just say like, no, I'm not interested in selling. Um, and what we do, if they say, no, I'm not interested in selling, it's pretty simple. We just say, okay, um, is there a time in the future when you might be interested in selling? And then if they say something like, yes, I will, then we will still confirm their first name and the property. And then we will send them over as a lead. Now, if a lot of times what they'll say is like, no, I'm not interested in selling. or the price is extremely high. Um, so the one piece of information that uh, we also have to confirm is that the price is not over $100,000 over the Zillow value of the property. So let me say that again. The, the, the price for a high price that we're not going to send to a lead is if Zillow value is over 100K, over, if it's $100,000 over the Zillow value. So the first thing we do is we look up on Zillow, hey, 
They set a price. Let's look it up on Zillow. All right, Zillow value is 300K. Their price is 375 or their price is 200. Whatever it is, that's still good. That's still a lead. But if this Zillow value is 300K and the price that they say is like 500,000, then that's a still a high price. And that fits into this not interested category. So again, same thing. If they're not interested or they have a high price, then we're going to send them a basic text of like, okay, thanks for letting me know. If you know anyone else who's trying to sell properties, we give them a $500 referral fee. We actually just closed a deal from this just the other day. Um, we paid out a $500 referral fee. Very interesting. Um, anyway, so once we put them on that, uh, once we reply with them, just like, hey, if you have any other properties and know anyone else who's selling one, we give a $500 referral fee. Then we're going to put them on what's called a drip. And we're going to drip them and text them every 60 days, something like, hey, are you interested in selling 123 Main Street? And then that's basically the text. It's going to get sent to them every 60 days for the next four uh, cycles, which is uh, 240 days. So that's really the way that it works. Um, so basically what we would do now is we're going to get into launch control. And I'm going to show you guys from a very granular level how this works and how to operate and do this process. So let me uh, share my screen here and uh, get this thing rolling for us. All right, so this is the dashboard. I have everything up, pulled up. And basically, you know, this is just showing you some very uh, high level things. But the things you really want to track as far as KPIs are you want to track your delivery rate, you know, track your response rate, which these are right here. And you want to make sure that they're within around the nine, like 88 to 92 is a good delivery rate. You want to make sure your response rate is around 12 to 14%. So again, we're doing very well in both of those departments. Um, and the other thing that we track, and this is a very important metric, is we can track this per texter because we realize that each texter had a very different skill level and could uh, um, could very drastically change the amount of leads we got because the whole entire goal is to get leads. So the metric we track for every single thing, this is our critical metric, is text per lead. And the reason that is the metric is because that tells us if I send out a thousand texts, I want to know how many leads I'm going to get. And right now, the way that we're, we're operating is we're around 300 texts per lead and we're sending out about 20,000 texts per day. So at high, at a very high scale, we're able to maintain a very solid text per lead. Now, people who are sending, you know, maybe a thousand texts a day or 2000 or 5,000 even, they're going to be much closer to a hundred texts per lead up to 200 texts per lead. That's the range that you kind of want to be in. Our best data performs in that range. We just have to send so much of it. That's why it's a little bit higher. So anyways, let's get into the most important pieces of information. So in order to do this, you need to import data. So if you have skip trace data, you're going to go here to the direct import tab. And this is what, where you're going to work. So let me move my little face out of the way. Move it up here to the top left. Um, and like I said, you want to import the data. So you click this import list button. You would drag your uh, CSV in here. This right here tells you exactly what it should look like. So I can open it up. Um, pull this over here. Here's the headers. First name, last name, mailing address. You know, you get the, the gist, but basically it tells you how to upload and import your file. So do that. And then once you do this, the next step is to create a campaign. And then that would be the next step. Now you can skip trace and launch control. Personally, I recommend skip tracing with batch skip tracing um, or where we get the data from PropStream. So we get the, the properties from PropStream. We then skip it in batch and then we'd upload it here. Now, another really good low cost idea is to use kind skip tracing. Uh, they have a website, kind skip tracing. It's this site. Let me move my face. I can't even see if I spelled it right. Right here. So what you do is you come here, contact them, get everything set up, tell them I sent you, and then um, you'll get hooked up and make sure you're taken care of. They give you for three cents, a record. So you can get a list of 10,000 records for $300 with a phone number. So really important thing to note is that the data is not as high quality, but it still works to a very high degree. You can still get a lot of deals coming from it. So anyways, if you're on a budget, that's what my recommendation is. So anyways, um, put in here, make your list, 
it's going to be in here. It's going to say assigned to a campaign. So the next thing is we got to make a campaign. So we go here to campaigns. And what we're going to do is I got to move my face out of the way here again, is we're going to create a new campaign. And then we're going to name it test just for this video. We select the phone numbers we want to use, 706. Then we have the call forwarding number. What the call forwarding number is, is this is literally just the number that if someone calls your texting number, it rings this number. So we're going to save that. Um, next up, you would go back to your direct import. You would click assign to campaign. You would search for the title and then test and I would apply it there. And I would just click that button. Now I've already, I don't want to mess up our campaigns or anything that they have structured because they have this all organized. There's tons of data flying and I don't want to screw it all up. So I'm just going to go here to the next step. The next step is to send the, to send the messages out. After, after we go through this, how to send the message, we're going to go through the functionality and the process of how do we move the data around? And then also how do we make the templates and stuff like to actually send the text. I'm gonna give you guys all full examples. I'll show you everything. So right here, um, we're gonna go down to batches. And this is now where we create a new batch. This is how we're gonna send the campaign out. So we're gonna click that, select the campaign. Let's just say I click, um, I'm gonna use this do not use one. So uh, I'm gonna select the uh, template. So basically they have all these different templates. These are reviewed and ready to go. So I would just click that. Um, I'll just click this one. This one seems like it's maybe not going to be used. I don't, it, it messes everything up if I use it. So anyways, I'm going to select the batch size. I'm going to click 50. You have choices normally between 50, 100, and 150. So you can click the one that works for you. doesn't matter which one you pick. Then you're going to create the batch. It's going to take you to this screen over here. This screen is basically going to tell you what message you're about to send out. So you can briefly look at it and make sure it makes sense. And then you just click send message. So I'm not going to send any messages because I'm going to screw up all their numbers and the accounts and everything like that. But you just click the messages. So when you click it, you just go click, 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 like every one Mississippi, two Mississippi, like that. And that's the rate you want to send it to get the best delivery rate. So anyways, uh, I am not going to do that. I'm just going to leave that here. And so that's me sending the text. Once the text comes back, then they go to inbox. Now, this is where the meat and the potatoes start. So if you have been skipping around the video, I want you to stop right here. This is a very critical next point in the video to where we're going to talk about how to segment replies and how to organize a CRM, uh, launch control, the CRM and launch control so we can get the most out of it. So what do we want to do is the first thing we want to do is we're going to open up a text. So I'm going to basically go through the way to organize it. And I'm going to go through an old text so I don't open up anything and screw up uh, someone's job. And I'm just going to click a different example. So, so let's walk through a scenario right here. So let's say Walker Gregory um, had responded and he gave us that positive reply. He says yes. So again, we asked him, hello, Walker. Are you planning? Um, so again, some of these sound weird because we have to write so many in order for the keep the delivery rate. But basically, are you planning on listing your place at 37? And you also can't say certain words in these templates. But basically, are you planning on selling this house? That's what we asked. You know, are you open to selling it? Very simply, <laughs> um, are you available? Okay, so we had a lot of call to actions in this one. They said no. Obviously, let's assume they said yes. If they say yes, okay, let's pull it up in an example right here. If they say yes, this is what we're going to basically say. Making sure, okay, um, I've heard your house for a deal. I'd like to talk about it. Making sure my records are updated and spelled it correctly. Um, for my manager, your name is this and the property address is that. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay, great. And then, so now what they're going to do at the end of the day, they're going to send this to the CRM. So they're waiting right now for a specific time to send this over as a lead. But they, the, the two actions they take is when they get a positive reply, the first thing they do is they mark it as a nurture lead. And then they respond with this. This basically, again, ensures that we're having the right person sent to the lead managers. So we're not wasting our time on talking to the wrong people. What would happen now is, it, is if you don't have a certain hours to send leads, then this lead would get pushed to CRM and you'd push it right here. So you'd verify it and push it. We have an hour that we're, we're going to push leads in um, that are very specific just for the leads to be pushed. And the reason is for that, because we just would overwhelm our lead managers with way too many leads at, one, at just random times. So it's easier just to, serve, to, to have very set times and that set schedule for that. So here, let's do another one. Um, we'll go over here. 
This person is a, this one's a high price. Basically it's a high price. They say 1.8 million. This is actually a drip campaign. So I'll show you, this is a perfect example of the next one. So if they basically end up not being a lead, then what we want to do is we want to market it as a drip. So like, Hey, Joel, your house here, you want to sell it. We click on Zillow. Zillow tells us 1.2. Okay. Nice house. Um, so, okay. We, that's over a hundred. He's asking over a hundred K over Zillow value. So thanks for letting me know. What did he put here? Is he, he put a drip and what does this drip do is it basically goes and does this. Let me, uh, let me, we're going to do one drip here. So the main drip we're going to do is the, uh, not interested long-term drip. So what this does is actually every 30 days. So they they actually just changed it. It was perfect. That's why I'm showing you guys. Um, I'm learning stuff today is every 30 days, we're going to text them basically, Hey, are you interested in selling your house? Hey, are you going to sell your house? You can copy this exact stuff if you want to. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. The other one, and that's their, their selection. So if they're not interested, here's your, here's your options. If you're listed with a realtor, here's their options. Boom, boom, boom. Again, pause it and watch it and read it. Um, if they have a high price, we send this one. Um, I, I, I personally don't recommend sending that one. I would just personally send this one. Um, I, I, that's what I would do. So I don't think they're using this, but they're definitely using that. And then um, what we do is we actually have one other one, the short, short-term one. Basically what this one does is if we, t if we they, let's say someone texts us, who is this? And we respond, hey, this is Hannah. Sorry for the message out of the blue. I was just reaching out to see if you were interested in selling 123 Main Street. And if they don't reply, then what we want to do is we want to put them on this short-term drip because we don't know anything about this person. So as soon as we send that text about, hey, who are you? We need to put them on this because we're going to lose that lead. Like that, there's no way we remember that lead. And it's not a lead like to go to the CRM. But it's also not, not a lead or not a lead or yeah, not, not a lead. So we want to put it on this drip campaign. So we make sure to re-text them the next day automatic. That's why we use automations. You know, basically, hey, are you the owner of this property address? If so, could you reach out and talk to me about this? You know, and then a couple of days later, this one, and then this one. And then basically what it's going to do is it's going to give us the chance to recapture that person and convert them into a lead later from these drips. Basically, that's it. Um, that's all the drip campaigns that we really use. And um, yeah, so that's how you segment them. So how does this work? Like we've got the drips, you know, you got the, the do not calls. I mean, technically, if someone's, you know, not interested, then you're just going to click this little do not call button right here. If it's the wrong number, you can click wrong number. It does the same thing. Uh, just so you can separate it out. But those are the main two things. Now, how, like, what do we do with this? Like, does it always stay nurtured? Like, what does warm and hot lead do? So warm and hot does nothing because ultimately, like, we don't really care. All we want to know is, do can we confirm that they are the people that we're looking for? And then is their price under $100,000 over Zillow value? And if they are both of those things and they want to sell, then we're just going to send them to the CRM. So the next step for a texter is at the end of the day, what they're going to do is they're going to go through here and they're going to just tag this as only seeing the nurture warm and hots. So they know if they have these, all these people sent to the CRM. So at the very end of the day, I'm going to go through and I'm going to go through all of these as a texture. Oh, pushed. Okay. Was this one pushed? Pushed. Okay. I'm also going to confirm, is this actually a lead? Hey, okay. This is a lead. Um, they got offered this. Okay. We can schedule a call. Um, okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> she doesn't want low ball offers. Anyway, we push them as a lead. They want to sell. And that price 339 was probably under hundred K. Um, okay. Maybe, uh, there is no estimate. Okay. So they pushed it anyways. Sounds good. So anyways, bang. And then just make sure this is confirmed. So this one's not, so they need to make sure that one gets done. Um, so, I mean, if I was actually the manager, this is what the manager's job is to do as well, is to go through and make sure all the accounts are all pushed because this is, there's a ton of leads, and a ton of great training opportunity to find here. So another piece of training advice would be, let me, let me like refresh this. Let's see if I go back to the inbox. Okay. Another great training advice would be if I'm the, if I'm the manager, I'm clicking, you know, Loom video recorder right here, Loom, the free software to video your screens. So I'm just going to go through here live 15 minutes 
I'm going to read every single one. I'm just going to look for things that look screwed up. Like, I'm like, yo, why is your account not clean? First off, um, I mean, honestly, like a lot of these texts have not been replied since 4 p.m. Uh, I'm in Denver, so I'm two hours behind. So that was 2 uh, two p.m. So yeah, these should be taken care of. Why is this not taken care of? Um, you know, we're at the end of the day. All these people should be cleaned up, put on a drip and yada, yada, yada. Like this person, why did you reply? It's a rental house on my rental company. Thanks for letting me know. Are, are you looking to sell it? Okay. If this was a rental house. Just because it was a rental house, like you didn't respond very well. And I teach them what to say and how to reply to that. Um, you know, all these different people, like, you know, there might be someone like 750, like this one right here, I'd look at it and make sure that that price is not, uh, not too high. And then that's like an easy, like, Hey, you missed a lead. What's going on? Um, you know, like this one's like, well, I live there. Like, this is a good opportunity for coaching. So, and like, you know, you'd say something different. You say, okay, so you live there. So I assume you're not looking to sell something like that. Right. And that would be what I would do as a manager. So anyways, we're not about doing all this crazy stuff. So you just want to do repeated training over and over and over again, because the one thing we found, let me stop sharing my screen here. I mean, we, so we had like five different textures and we found like our text per lead was really skyrocketing. And initially we had the belief that a texture couldn't screw it up because all they had to do was just, if they said, yes, I'm interested in selling, they just had to push them over to the CRM. But what kept happening was, is we'd realize we get these kind of like borderline weird scenarios. And really what we ha saw is we had a couple of people doing a really good job and they were hitting their text per lead numbers. They were hitting their targets. And we had a couple of people who were not doing such a good job. And what we did is we kind of analyzed what the two groups were doing. And um, we realized that these weird scenarios were just being handled very incorrectly. So we started training on that a ton more. And ever since then, it dropped our text for a lead, like where we were embarrassedly at 500, all the way down to 300 and a little bit below that now, closer to 80. So with that being said, is like it's very, very important to train on these every single day, even if you feel like it's impossible to screw up. So that's my word of advice on that. So let's get back into it. I'm going to share my screen again here, screen number two. And I'm going to go into templates and how they're written. And basically, these are going to be crazy, um, but they're 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 reviewed for grammar and for accuracy, and they make sense. So they're not all going to be perfect. But here's the basics. Let's let's go in and edit this one here. So basically, how do you write this? Um, it's very simple. The goal is to just say, hey, first name, are you interested in selling 123 Main Street? Or do you have any properties for sale? You can take a bunch of different routes. You can just say, hey, are you selling properties? You can say, hey, are you selling 123 Main Street? Or, hey, first name, are you selling 123 Main Street? Or just, hey, first name, are you selling properties? And what that allows you to do is have a few different variations in your messaging. So you can write a bunch of different templates. So a few things about this screen as a whole is you have a few different things going on here. So here's our names. Here's your categories. So you can categorize these if you want. Um, we keep them pretty general for the most part. Here's a list of all the best practices. So you can go and watch those. I would highly recommend it. I learned a lot going through this a few years ago. Um, negative keywords. These are all the words you cannot use in the templates. The reason you cannot use them is because it flags carriers, um, which will drop your response rates and your delivery rates, mainly your delivery rates with carriers. And then here's the other things you need to do is you can have a minimum of eight characters. You can have at least two spinner tokens. What is a spinner token, you might ask? So a spinner token is this. It's tell, tell, tell. So they just did this to get around it a little bit. Um, I'm not sure what the difference is here. They must use a Greek letter or something. Looks like they're using Greek letters. Or actually, I know what they actually did is because it's telling me to do Terry is they did T-E-L-L -L, capital I. And this one is Telly, lowercase I. And this one's Tell with, like you can see the other A is moved, the other L is moved. So this one they did T-E-L-L -L, capital I on the first L. And this was second L. And this one's first L. It's edited. So that's pretty smart. And then they did I apostrophe am i apostrophe am and then this one's i am this one's i am so i think these two might just be the same but when you do duplicates like this it allows you to get it get by on it um and this one is currently and then currently 
they spell that wrong. They just did the I instead of the L. So again, capital I's are very good for L's. Searching for a place to buy a house, place, place. So place, again, with the I, not the L. So that's the spinner token. So spinner tokens, this, this, and that. So we have four spinner tokens. Then each spinner token must have at least three elements. What is three elements? Three elements means that it's, if you only had, so this one only has two elements. This one has four. This one has three. And this one has four. Does that make sense? So one, two, three, four elements. One, two, three, four elements. One, two elements. One, two, three elements. Does that make sense? Elements are just a group within the spinner. Uh, must have a merge field. A merge field is one of these text spinners. So if I was here, I would type that in. That's a merge field. Basically, it's pulling information from your data set. And then we have one as first name. That's our merge field. And then this one must have no negative restrictive keywords. So it cannot have any of these words. So now that we went over that, you just have to do this four times and create an alternate message, which has basically these things. Minimum eight characters, cannot have any merge fields, must have no negative keywords. So that's really it. That's everything it is to do with templates. And like, those are a few examples. So I'll leave this one. If you want to see the examples, pause right now, copy this one. Pause right now, copy this one. Pause right now, and then copy this one. Pause right now, and then copy this one. Pause right now, and then copy this one. So anyways, I gave you guys the example, the time to get these things written down. And now... It's very simple for you guys to start sending text. But before you start sending all these texts, when you start sending them all, you're going to realize you've sent tons of messages. And there's one important feature left in Launch Control that we haven't taken advantage of. And it's called the follow-up campaign. And what is the follow-up campaign? The follow-up campaign is the campaign that allows you to follow up with everyone who does not respond to you in your first text and send another message to them 30 days later to where you can text only the people who have not replied to you and have not texted you back. This is going to be how you get the biggest bang for your buck from your data set, from your list. So essentially, you take that list that you sent, and let's say you sent 1,000 people. Well, 20% response rate, 200 reply. So now you have 800 people who did not reply to you. So those 800 people you need to text again. You'll get another 15% response rate, 10% response rate. So out of the 800, another 80 reply. And eventually you're going to milk that list down to where it gets you more. You spent great money for that list. You might as well keep milking from it. So how do you do that? It's pretty simple. We're going to go here to the campaigns tab. We're going to click on create a follow-up campaign. We're going to click on campaign. We're going to search for all the new campaigns we have sent in the past. And now you can see all these things that are available to be selected. So I'm just going to click one that's really small. I don't want to cause too much of an issue with our data, but absentee Barto, old owners, yada, yada, yada. So there's 71 of them. I'm going to select this. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the month without a response, December, and I'm going to name it. And I'm going to name it based on the, the time that I sent the, the text. So what I mean by that is a new template name, a new campaign is going to have nothing like name. It's just going to be the list name. But what we do on our follow-up things is we name them based on the round of follow-ups. So we would call it R1 for the first round of follow-ups. And then the next one would be R2. So if I was to do a follow-up campaign and see that my title was this, then the next time I do it, I would do this. Now I know the second time I sent it. So I know over time that it takes a, you get a lot less from the list the more you sent it. So like to give you some data from about a year ago when I, when I pulled this information was the first campaign we send someone is about 45 to 50% of all the revenue we brought in. Now that means the first campaign you send is the most valuable one. Now the second and third campaign, so that means fall up around one and fall up around two are where another 20 to 30% of revenue came from. So that means from the first three campaigns you do, you're getting about 80% of all your revenue. So if you don't send anything past three, just statistically, you're doing all right. You want to capture that other 20%, you only have to be able to send up to, up to five campaigns, which would be four follow-ups. And after that, we didn't see much results from it. And it, it made more sense to send new data or different data. So again, 
Maxing it out with our data is four follow-ups and one initial send. So that's five total sends. So if you see something with R2 in here, then you know this is getting towards the end of its life. And if it didn't perform very well on the last time you sent the campaign, you probably shouldn't send it again. You might want to just can that one and wait for a little while longer and refresh the data. So anyways, you just save it and you start sending it. But that's a little bit about tracking. And tracking your data on how to make decisions is the most important piece of information because in marketing, especially marketing with a list, like we can see all the lists here, all of their results. You can see how many were sent, how many are left to be sent. You can see it, what the deliverability was, what's the response rate. And then what we did is we built out a sheet to where we can see how many total texts do we send for each campaign. So it, basically, this is what it says. It says campaign name, text sent, text delivered, text responses, leads, leads. And then it shows us what percent, what, what's the text per lead per campaign. So what we're going to do is when we decide to send another campaign is we're just going to filter by when's the last time we sent that list. So it, it has a date on there for when we sent it. And then also what's our text sent per lead. And then if we have a baseline for our entire ecosystem, well, it's 280 right now. So if it's 280, that means any any list that performs better than 280 text per leads, which means you want to be lower. So if it was 200 text per lead is good, 100 text per lead, that's better. And then anything that's better than our company baseline, all of our data, we want to send more frequently. We want to prioritize to send it a second, third, and fourth time compared to something that maybe gets 800 text per lead. We don't want to send because that's just like, it's not not working that well. So that's how we decide what list to send and what data to send. So once you start sending the text, you need to track the metrics behind it so you know what text to send more of. And if you don't know like what's working, how do you do more of what's working? Because the number one rule to make money is if you have something that works, it's just to keep doing more of it. It's to double down. It, you always hear it from people is if you have a marketing channel that's really working well, double down. Well, how do you double down? You do more of what's working and you have to know what's working first in order to do more of it. So with that being said, go send some text, find out what's working and go do more of it. And I will see you guys next week um, on our value live, but I appreciate you. I hope this helped a lot. The one thing you can do for me is just use our affiliate link down below if you are looking to uh, get into launch control. Thanks.